Uh, so, as explained, my name is Matthew Griffin. I'm the founder and CEO of the 311 Institute and the World Futures Forum. We work directly with the United Nations to help them solve some of the world's greatest challenges here on Earth. We also work with organizations like NASA, JAXA, as well as a whole variety of companies that you're using today, including Samsung, Arm, Microsoft. And we cross 450 exponential technologies. We cross every sector. But one of my favorite things to do is actually educate people about the future of space and the future of space opportunities. Uh, whether it's upstream applications, downstream applications, whether it is insta insta interstellar or whether it is low Earth orbit. So some of the things that we talk about basically at the 311 Institute with all the organizations that we work with is how space is a model for sustainable living. Uh, so, for example, we talk with NASA about the implications of new advanced gene editing technologies about developing photosynthesizing astronauts, because obviously food in space is one problem. And actually, yes, this is a thing. Uh, 3D printing space colonies with organizations like ICON, NASA, BIG, as well as others. So recently we've been 3D printing the new Mars vernacular. We also work with the UAE government and they are developing their own Mars dune uh, cities. Um, we also had conversations with companies like NASA, for example, about using synthetic biology to create what we call fungal colonies. So these have already been demonstrated where you can grow buildings and structures with the right shapes out of fungi. Um, we talk about new green fuel for rockets. So, for example, if you have a look at the Falcon Heavy, it's actually methane neutral. Um, but we also look at growing biofuels on Mars, for example, with organizations like Georgia Tech. Uh, and of course, we look at the future of farming, which is very applicable to here on Earth because it produces over 30 percent of all gr global greenhouse gases. So this is where we talk about vertical farms. We talk about clean meat, which is where you take a stem cell from a chicken, for example, put it into a bioreactor and you have a chicken nugget. If you want to try those, go to Singapore because they've just been approved by the regulators. Um, now, when we start having a look at space in terms of playground, you know, whether it's a business playground or an actual playground, we talk about 3D and 4D printing, anything from small satellites all the way through to self-assembling space stations uh, in orbit. So this is courtesy of 3D printing, 4D printing. But a lot of these things are also designed by artificial intelligences. We've seen the ability to use AI to cut down the amount of materials used to develop things like lunar rovers uh, by 30 percent, um, fuelless satellites uh, using the Earth's magnetosphere, um, solar power, so we work with the US government and China uh, to help them to increasingly do due diligence basically on solar power stations that will start construction estimated about 2025 and beam six gigawatts of solar energy down to Earth via microwave or laser transmission uh, space Internet, so we're with organizations like Starlink, where we're now using space, obviously, to connect the other four billion people on the planet and all the benefits that that brings. Um, and then again, when we look at SpaceX, working with SpaceX basically on intercontinental travel using Mach 25 rockets. So this is kind of the SN15, 16, 17 Falcon Heavy prototypes that are now actually being used and prototyped and tested uh, from Houston to Hawaii. Balloons, space perspective. So when we start having a look at opening up space to space tourism, we work with all these sorts of organizations. Also Virgin Galactic, you know, where we start seeing the cost of accessing space fall. And it's fallen by over 99% in the past two, three decades, as has been mentioned already. Space hotels, especially with companies like Axiom. So these are set to launch kind of 2023. But even if we delay it, we're looking at kind of 2026. Uh, deep space colonies with founders like Jeff Bezos. Um, now, these are obviously conceptual, but again, courtesy of the Chinese government, basically we're now starting to talk about building space structures that are typically a mile long. Very, very early days, though. So we talk about current day and the next 50 years, all the bleeding edge stuff that you might like. Moon colonies, obviously, with organizations like ESSA. Uh, and Martian colonies with a lot of private uh, philanthropic billionaires that you all probably know. So that's it from me. Um, if you are interested in, in any of the things basically that I've been talk to, talking to you about, get in touch. Uh, I have lots more material. And from an education perspective, 
there's a lot more going on that can benefit here us here <laughs> us here on Earth as well as out there in the cosmos. So thank you and goodbye. <laughs>